radar has become essential to the employment of the most modern high-speed aircraft. In all models of the 111, terrain following radar not only provides a visual display of approaching terrain, but through the capabilities of a computer, pitch steering commands can be automated to guide the aircraft safely over obstacles in its flight path. At selected low absolute altitudes from 200 feet to 1,000 feet, the possibility of detection is reduced during high-speed, all-weather night penetration flights into hostile areas. TFR has two terrain-following channels, either of which may be selected to enhance the operational reliability of the 111 during terrain-following missions. This simplified diagram of one channel of the auto TF system identifies basic lines of communication between its components. The TF radar transmitter receiver provides the presentation of terrain ahead on the e-scope and sends this same information to the TF computer. The TF computer also requires the low altitude radar altimeter, or LORA, be functioning. Additionally, the LORA provides absolute altitude indications in the cockpit. The TF computer generates the zero command, or ride line, on the e-scope which defines an imaginary reference line below and ahead of the aircraft, moving with it as a shield against approaching obstacles. This zero command line represents the TF computer's logic for satisfying the requested set clearance and ride, and is the threshold for up commands from terrain. Note how this line curves up in front of the aircraft to allow flight below higher terrain ahead. The TF computer uses these radar inputs, reliable signals from the CADC, and the bomb nav system to provide pitch steering commands. The commands generated by the TF computer will control the aircraft when auto TF is selected. This couples computer outputs directly to the pitch damper providing automatic terrain following flight. The climb and dive commands may be displayed on the primary attitude reference and heads up display by placing the pitch steering switch to the TF position. In some models of the 111, an oral command is generated. This tone for climb commands and this tone for dive commands. When the bar is centered, no oral commands are issued, which indicates that TF climb or dive commands are being satisfied. The view of terrain following radar in TF mode is along a narrow eight degree beam, driven in a vertical scan pattern, projected along the ground track of the aircraft. It scans eight degrees above the aircraft center line and 32 degrees below this line. The TF antennas and attack radar antennas are mounted on a roll stabilized pedestal. The e-scope displays an accurate but distorted picture of the zero command line and ground returns from a minimum range of 1,250 feet to 10 miles. The upper and lower edges of the TF mode scan pattern are the upper and lower edges of the rectangle on the e-scope. Thus, the TFR scan just in front of the aircraft, although actually a short line, is stretched out to form the left edge of the rectangle. Repositioning these lines causes linear distortion within the picture field lying between them, curving the near ground returns and ride line down, 
the vertical axis of the e-scope is calibrated in degrees corresponding to the vertical scan of the antenna. The 40 degree scan at 10 miles range is the right edge of the rectangle. Range is distorted in order to enlarge the presentation closest to the aircraft. The nearest mile ahead of the aircraft occupies one half of the horizontal presentation. The next mile is one half the remaining space. The third mile, one half of that remainder, and so on to 10 miles. Compression of the right half of the e-scope range causes the picture of the ride line to curve further up. The small dot in the upper center of the e-scope is the self-test pulse, which indicates all inputs necessary for TF are being sent to the TF computer. During ground checks, radar returns are seen along a line which is about eight degrees down, or one-fifth the distance from the top of the sweep to the bottom. The nose of the aircraft is on this line at the left edge of the scope. At 1G and normal angles of attack for terrain following, this line is nominally the future flight path of the aircraft. The intersection of this line of returns with different requested zero command lines identifies the range at which terrain at your altitude ahead begins to cause an up command from the TF computer. The auto TF descent, sometimes called the blind letdown, may be done at any altitude below 38,000 feet MSL. Let's say we're beginning at 8,000 feet AGL. The radar altimeter, or the LORA, has a tracking limit of 5,000 feet. Above 5,000 feet, it will indicate zero with the off flag in view. To satisfy the TF computer requirement for a LORA input, a pseudo or false altitude of 1,875 feet is provided to it by placing the altimeter bypass switch to bypass. This pseudo input is compared by the TF computer with the requested clearance altitude of 1,000 feet for initial descent. And the pitch damper will get a 10 degree dive command if auto TF is engaged. When the aircraft drops through the 5,000 foot mark, the radar altimeter locks in, replacing the 1,875 foot pseudo altitude signal with actual altitude, increasing dive command to 12 degrees. A manual descent could be made with the auto TF switch off or with the autopilot disconnect paddle switch depressed using the control stick to center the pitch command bar while monitoring the e-scope and the LORA. Ground returns within the 40 degree vertical sweep of the TF antenna enter the e-scope from the right at the 10 mile mark. These will not affect TF computation until they are within the six mile range. The TF computer only considers forward video from 1,250 feet to 36,000 feet, or six miles. As altitude decreases, up commands are generated by the TF computer to level the aircraft, with the ride line just above ground returns for normal auto TF flight. Hard ride control has been selected. This action has moved the top of the zero command line to the left which means the terrain will intersect with it when the aircraft has moved to a minimum distance from the obstacle. Hard ride will also allow the aircraft to hug the backside of obstacles as close as possible by commanding as low as zero G indicated when crossing peaks. Had medium ride control been chosen, a more gradual maneuver would result. Note the curve is in a less upright position for advanced interception with the terrain. A minimum of 0.50 G indicated may be commanded when overflying obstacles. Selection of soft ride advances the interception still further 
in activating the pull-up command at a greater distance from the approaching obstacle. And we'll command 0.75 G indicated on the backside of peaks. Although the programmed up G commands decrease when going from hard to medium to soft ride, any ride selected may command three indicated Gs, or 2.4 G for the FB111 in response to ground returns of late showing obstacles. The right or upper portion of the zero command line is also affected by airspeed changes. In flight, as the true airspeed is increased, this upper curve portion will flatten out slightly. As the true airspeed is reduced, the curve will become more upright. The left part of the curve only changes as higher or lower clearance requests are made. Flight control gains have a temporary influence on ride characteristics. If high-speed auto TF is performed immediately after prolonged slow cruise, the selected ride may seem more abrupt than normal for a short while. Conversely, TF performed at slow speeds immediately after high-speed flight will degrade temporarily the auto TF response. An obstacle ahead of the aircraft will create a terrain video peak on the e-scope, increasing in size on the e-scope as the aircraft approaches the obstacle. A shadow or void is created behind peaks due to normal line of sight characteristics of radar. Terrain of 10 degrees vertical development, or one quarter of the vertical e-scan, has a height of about 1,000 feet at one mile range, 2,000 feet at two mile range, and 3,000 feet at three mile range, and so on in linear progression to 10,000 feet at 10 miles. This rule of thumb allows estimation of relative heights of e-scope returns, and in mountainous terrain can assist prediction of energy requirements crossing higher terrain ahead. The approaching obstacle suggests it would penetrate the zero command line at about the three mile mark on our scale. Accordingly, the system would begin computing an appropriate pull-up command. Terrain higher than the aircraft may block all ground returns further away. When the peak is crested, terrain beyond will become visible on the e-scope. The near returns from a peak follows the zero command line in below the aircraft and disappears inside the 1,250-foot range or 32 degrees downscan. Pitch attitude established by the TF computer for crossing the peak may be monitored as passage of the peak is indicated by LoRa altitude decreasing to requested clearance at the peak, then increasing in response to lower terrain beyond. In summary, the e-scope and LoRa provide information for routine monitor of normal auto TF and are primary references for cross-check. Terrain separation could be manually provided by reference to a good e-scope and LoRa alone. However, pitch vector is critical at lower set clearances and crew workload is high. Manual TF is much more easily accomplished by centering pitch steering commands displayed on the primary attitude reference or during visual conditions, the optical sight, which allows outside reference. During auto TF, the crew should monitor the operation of the system while performing other crew tasks. For automatic terrain following or manual terrain following, using displayed pitch steering commands, the TF computer requires reliable inputs from the inertial platform for attitude and flight vector, the CADs for true airspeed and angle of attack, and a good radar altimeter input. Either of two channels of LoRa continually measure distance to the ground directly below if the aircraft descends below 68% of selected terrain clearance or 83% in the FB111 or the TF system has a self-detected failure. A red TF fail light will come on. 
and the aircraft will begin an indicated 3G flyup, or 2.4 Gs, in the FB-111. The failed flyup maneuver may be overridden and manual control resumed by actuating the paddle switch on the control stick and manually flying the aircraft. The fail channel is indicated by the yellow fail caution light on the TF control panel. Selection of an alternate good TF or LoRa channel at a safe altitude will allow resumption of auto TF. The terrain clearance or system fail fly-up feature is inoperative with the paddle switch depressed. The 8-degree TF radar beam discerns target positions along the ground. Drift solution provided by the inertial navigation platform and the navigation computer provide up to 15 degrees of drift correction to the TF radar antenna. Attack radar visibility along ground track is always greater or equal to e-scope visibility. Crew coordination of e-scope picture and the progression of ground returns on the attack radar checks drift angle accuracy compensation of the TF antenna. The e-scope and TF computer receive no information about obstacles outside of the drift stabilized 8 degree beam spread. 4 degrees to the right and 40 degrees to the left of the aircraft's ground track. Because of this, the TFR cannot anticipate possible obstacles inside a turn without a lead into turn capability. Aware of this, the AC should never exceed 10 degrees of bank without lead into turn while relying on the TFR alone. Lead into turn TFRs can bank 30 degrees. Towers and trees may not reflect sufficient returns to fly over such obstacles. The LoRa, when looking over trees, may indicate slightly higher than requested set clearance. The response of the TF radar to weather is variable. If no precipitation is present, auto TF will usually be normal because clouds are, for the most part, not visible to the terrain following radar. Rainfall is usually, but not always, seen by the TF radar. If any precipitation is visible to the TF radar, the auto TF system will attempt to fly over it. A lack of TF radar returns from higher terrain beyond the precipitation, or complete loss of radar presentations when in the rain, are hazards to terrain following flight. LoRa override alone cannot respond to terrain outside its downward view or anticipate higher terrain ahead. Crew coordination should be used to avoid heavy precipitation and abandoning TF flight should be considered if heavy precipitation cannot be avoided. Most models of the 111 have a 500 foot weather mode to enhance weather penetration. This mode computes only to two and a half miles and electrically ignores returns higher than the fuselage center line. The TF radar will receive returns from almost all terrain compositions. However, some ground and water surfaces allow the radar beam to reflect away from the aircraft. Sand, wheat fields, dry lakes, or the sea may cause this. With each sweep of the TF radar, the computer compares all ground returns as seen on the e-scope and provides a pitch vector solution to satisfy the requested terrain clearance and ride. The LoRa provides continuous cockpit indication of absolute altitude, but does not affect the pitch vector solution unless the aircraft descends below 68% of requested clearance or unless the system is in LoRa override. In the FB model, the tolerance limit is 83%. An absence of returns detected within a 1,000-foot band of terrain lying between 3,500 and 4,500 feet ahead of the aircraft arms the LoRa override feature of the auto TF system, 
comparing LoRa input with the solution from ground returns alone. If the LoRa input is a stronger climb signal than the solution from ground returns, LoRa becomes the primary reference for TF flight. Looking straight down, the radar altimeter provides absolute altitude and altitude rate of change to the computer until the aircraft has cleared an area of low radar reflection. The override function of the radar altimeter is superseded by the TFR whenever it receives a video return requiring a more positive rate of climb. LoRa override frequently occurs momentarily when crossing sharp peaks due to the look angle of the TF radar and the downslope of terrain past the peak. This condition may be felt in the aircraft as an increase in abruptness of pitch commands. Minimum altitude crossing the peak may be slightly less than the requested set clearance under such conditions. While only the TF mode provides the capability for terrain following flight, the pilot may, during auto TF, select situation mode on the spare TF channel for display of a 60 degree view of what lies ahead at approximately his own altitude or above. To view this display, a range setting of 5, 10, or 15 miles should be selected on the e-scope indicator. This gives a view of 30 degrees azimuth on both the left and right sides of the flight path within the selected range. Situation mode is pitch and roll stabilized and contributes no inputs to the TF computer. Situation mode display may be used as a cross check to see if a change in course might hold more tactical advantages than would flying directly over an obstacle. The third mode, ground mapping mode, having the same stabilization as situation scanning, can cover the ground surface beneath and ahead of the aircraft. Its scan may be tilted 15 degrees below horizontal. Due to poor scope resolution and a narrow band of ground returns, ground map mode provides a limited backup for the attack radar system. Automatic terrain following radar, a modern electronic tool that supplements the capabilities of the crew and provides safe and accurate control of the 111 during high speed, low level flight.